check out how sexy this thing is, right? Yeah. board I made, I put a GMC Denali on it and a Cadillac CTSV. And uh, I got the CTSV when I was 25. I made the dream board when I was 19. And I got the Cadillac when I was 25. Now I'm 29. I traded the Cadillac in on the Hellcat. Well, I'm keeping the Hellcat, which is wicked because it's just too much of a car to drive around on a daily basis. And uh, now we're going to go pick up the Denali. So I'm going to have two of my dream cars the age of 29, which I'm pumped at. Probably not the best, completely the best financial choice, just to be real, but I just love cars, man. I, I just gotta have it, you know? I, I don't, there's certain things that I just, that, that's one thing I, I gotta have, I gotta have a car. Speaking of which, when are you getting your car? I gotta call the guy in the name of Chrysler and go see it. Yeah, dude. Yeah. The vision board. So I'm, I'm very excited. Hashtag action board. Hashtag get shit done board, you know? I'll tell you what didn't get me the truck. Sitting in my room and meditating. That didn't That didn't get me the truck. That, that will not get you your dream board, is looking at your dream board all the time. What a monster. But it's not about the toys, you know? Like I was saying earlier, with the things that excite us, the things that get us pumped up now are the, are the milestones that we hit in business, the milestones that we hit in our personal life. But really, the first things that you, you invested and spend money on, this stuff's peanuts. The cost of this stuff is nothing. It's investing in yourself. In the last two years, I've spent over $200,000 on my own professional development, workshops, training programs, uh, spiritual retreats, uh, you name it. Uh, just overall mentorship and personal growth. So I spent more money on that than on any other area of my life. And what that's done, actually more like the last three years, that's allowed me to run a multi-million dollar company, whereas before I didn't have that capability. So the most important thing to invest in is yourself. If you invest in yourself, you can eventually create everything that you want to invest in outside things. You know, I have a, a mentor. I asked her, I said, when do I make the transition when do I make the transition from investing in myself to investing in outside assets? And she said, if you can't afford to invest in both, then just keep investing in yourself. And I followed that rule and now I've got the wherewithal to do both. So really important for anybody who's watching is always invest in yourself. If you're not investing in yourself, you're not gonna be able to create the life that you want because you need to build the skills, you need to build the EQ, you need to build the discipline. And that's gonna come by investing time and money in, in, in you. Where's my truck at? Really? I don't have my truck on display? Is that it inside the showroom? It is. That's no, my it isn't. Yeah, no, are you sure? A white Denali? I'm pretty sure that's my truck right there. You think so? Oh wait, this is handicap parking. This is only for you. It's got balloons on it, bro. That's gotta be it. Yeah. this truck when Whoa. I was 110 pounds. It's literally on my deathbed. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna buy a, a new truck. <laughs> Don't know if that's the best financial decision, but Ooh. brand new, baby. You wanna see where the goods are at? This, this is the best part of the whole thing. I don't, I don't really order vehicles, I order motors. That thing's, that's 435 horsepower. That's the most powerful V8 you can get in a half-ton truck. This is the new truck. We're really excited to be picking it up. Uh, it's something that's been on my, my bucket list or my dream board list for quite a while. And I can tell you what got me here, what, what got me this truck, this dream truck, this like, I think it's like an $85,000 vehicle. It's got 435 horsepower, completely unnecessary. But it's a good kind of unnecessary. It's a good kind of ridiculous, you know? But what got me here is sales. What got me here was knocking on doors. What got me here was going through rejection over and over and over again. If there's anything that I can say 
has attributed to my success is I've gone through rejection and failure faster than everybody else. Like most people, you know, not everybody, but most people. And that's what sales does for you. It allows you to go through the rejection early so that you can get the lessons out of it. I knocked a lot of doors to get here. I did a lot of door-to-door -door sales in the pouring rain. You know, I lived in a I lived in a shop warehouse for eight months, slept on an air mattress. Literally eight months inside of a warehouse. You know, ate a ton of fast food, you know, lived on the road, lived out of a suitcase, knocked on how many doors business to business, how many cold calls I made, how many, how many rejections that I went through. And now I'm like, I'm looking at my life and I'm like, this is pretty sweet. But the thing is, like, you have to do a bunch of shit to get here, you know? Like, early on, you can't just take advice from people that say, do what you love. Like, early on in your career, that's not an option for you. You gotta get so good at what you do that you can choose to only do what you love. But in the process of getting there, you gotta do some bullshit. You gotta, you gotta do the hard thing. You gotta do whatever it takes. And for me, that's knocking on doors. That's making phone calls. That's that's walking into businesses and getting rejected. That's that's giving free sales presentations and doing free trainings. I don't know how much free stuff I gave away in order to get my business going. And that's what it takes, man. Like, you know, it's it's a hustle. One second, my girl's here. What she have to say? Hey, baby, how are you? Hey, how's your truck? All right, we literally just drove off the lot with it, and we're filming right now. You're on camera. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do you love it? Yeah, where are you? You want me to come get you? I'm like downtown. I was just like over the trainer at 7.30. Okay. I was just kind of giving you a call, but then my friend is sitting in this chair, and I was like, oh my God, that sounds so much fun. But okay. I should be making a visit with the trainer. But I was like, but I kind of want to go to share that now. No. Uh, but I want to see the truck too. I guess we can go for a ride today when I go home. You can go in front of us. And feel free to drive like a Dude, that's a sexy car. Oh, dude. Dude. I've never get to see it from, from outside, you know? Or listen to it. I was telling Matt, I'm like, I was into the Challengers yeah. for so long until yeah. I saw your Charger. Yeah. It's a nice car for a Charger. All right, go ahead. talk about the differences between YESA and school because our motto is we do what school doesn't. So if we look at our graduates, if we look at the, the programs, the enrollees that are coming out of YESA versus somebody coming out of school, you know, there's a huge difference. First of all, one of them is coming out with a substantial amount of debt and debt that you can't default yourself out of. It can't be forgiven. And, and the rates on, uh, on student loans now are like seven, 8%, it's ridiculous. So just in order for that guy to get out of that debt and to get ahead is gonna be difficult. So what we're doing at YESA is we're giving an opportunity to the young people to enter their career right away. Straight out of high school, that's all that's required for you to enter YESA is you just have to have a high school diploma, all right? You need to be able to read and you need to be able to write, okay? So if you can do those two things, you're, you're already ahead of the game. And what we do is we take these graduates and we're gonna plug you in to a sales, a four year sales and business program. And what that program is, it's an entry level sales position with a reputable company. So we go after contracts 
with blue chip companies, multi-billion dollar organizations usually, where you can actually begin a sales career with a reputable business, and we're gonna put you through our curriculum. So 90 minutes of every single day, you're gonna be studying sales, you're gonna be studying negotiation, you're gonna be studying goal setting, business development, you're gonna be studying strategic decision making. There's a lot of training that you're gonna be getting, except the difference is this isn't theory out of a textbook written by a professor who makes his money off the textbooks. What we're educating you on is the top 1%. So, and it, there's actually an entire area of our curriculum called 1% Studies, which talks about the top mindsets and the top traits and attributes of the top 1%. But what we've done is we've studied the top 1% income earners in sales and business and we put together all of their best practices, all of their strategies, all of their sales uh, tactics, all of their marketing approaches, and you now get to study only the best content while you're at YESA. So that's a huge advantage. You're not getting that at university, you're not getting it at college. You're, you're definitely not getting 1% studies. I can guarantee you there is not a class in any university that's called the study of the 1%, it doesn't exist.